It's now noon and we've got several more panelists on. So I'm gonna transition this over to the, the parent group, uh, Andy or Alicia, or whoever's taken this on. Alicia. Yeah. Thank you, Lane. Thank you. Um, I would just like to welcome everyone to our January PTO meeting. My name is Alicia Emanuel, and I am the co-president of Valley Valley Southwoods PTO, along with Andy Lippman, who is also on, on camera. And Lane is going to be, um, she's from the School of Communications Relations Department, and will be helping be our moderator today. And we are so glad you are joining us for this virtual meeting. Our topic today is college planning, and we have several speakers to get through, so I will be brief. Please know that we'll be taking questions at the end of each presentation, and if you want to use, I believe there should be a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, at least on a desktop, um, and if you want to use that for questions, that really helps us keep track of which questions have been addressed. If you don't have access to that, you can also do chat, and we will make sure to get to those as well. Lane is going to be helping monitor questions for us. Before oh, we just move, a side note, sorry, we do not have the chat functionality for this oh. webinar. It is just the Q&A. Oh, perfect. So yeah, that will really help us keep track of those questions and make sure we get to all of them. Before we move to our first speaker, I want to mention what our PTO has been doing to help keep our schools safe and keep us connected and helping staff know how appreciated they are this year. Um, at the beginning of the year, our PTO provided masks to all staff members at Valley and Valley Southwoods. You've probably seen them around. Um, our PTO also provided ID lanyards to all the students at Valley and Valley Southwoods so they could be identified by staff. And our hospitality committee has pa provided packaged meals to teachers during conferences. We have also published a student directory to help families stay connected to one another. And in December, due to your generous contributions, we were able to distribute cookie boxes to all Valley and Valley Southwoods staff members. To continue to do our work supporting staff and students, we need your help. Please consider donating to PTO either through our Give Lively site, which you can find on our Facebook page, or you can also become a member through our website, which is www.vhspto.org. So without further ado, I see that Cindy Todd is on, on here as well. Um, I just want to introduce Cindy. Cindy will be presenting um, information on the West Des Moines Student Scholarship Fund. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Alicia. I appreciate you um, having me today and allowing me to share a little bit about our program, the West Des Moines Community School Student Scholarship Fund. Um, we were started in 1993, and since then, we have paid out over $1.4 million to over 2,230 students. For the graduating class of 2020, we awarded 152 scholarships for $124,480. So we like to give money away. We are a 501c3 under the umbrella of the West Des Moines Community School Foundation. So all donations to us are tax deductible. And we raise funds in a couple of different ways. We have a golf outing, we have football, basketball, and wrestling sponsorships, and we've had quilt raffles in the past. Um, other scholarship money comes from businesses, individuals, service organizations, and memorials. And our scholarship amounts vary between $500 and $3,000. Um, we have several multi-year scholarships also. Info about our group can be found on our webpage at www dot wdmssf dot org. We also have a Facebook page which has the most up-to-date information about us. It's WDM Student Scholarship Fund and be sure to like and follow that so that you get up-to-date information. We also put announcements in the Valley Vibes about our different scholarships but our Facebook page has the most info and if you notice a um, Facebook post, please share it with your friends to help us get the information out. Our application can be found on the Valley Counseling webpage listed by the due date of 2-26-21. And we also have several other applications that uh, require a small supplemental ap application that go with our general application for specific scholarships. Um, applications must be accessed by a WDMCS Gmail address. We designed that this way, that way 
so that students fill out the applications. It's part of our process to help the students gain skills for later in life. Once the applications are complete, follow the directions online carefully. The application is to be printed out and turned into Mrs. Geersdorf in the Valley Counseling Office by the deadline on February 26th. We don't accept late applications. And we have some amazing scholarships this year. I just wanna take just a few more minutes and share um, information about those with you. We have substantial scholarships for students going into education, students who have a strong financial need and who have a diverse background. We have nice scholarships for students going into a trade or a community college as their education destination. I think a lot of times students think that our scholarships are only for four-year schools, and that's not at all the case. Um, we don't have a lot of kids who apply for scholarships for trade, pro trade programs, so please encourage all the students that you know um, to apply for our trade scholarships if that's something they're looking at going into. We have the Emily Weikert Memorial ISU Business Scholarship. It's a very generous scholarship, $2,500 for up to four years for a student attending ISU in business. We have a scholarship for students studying environmental science, horticulture, fine arts, women planning on going into accounting, women planning on studying science or engineering. The Hawkeye Business Scholarship is a new scholarship to us this year, $2,000 for a student who will be attending the Tippy College of Business in Iowa City. Students who are active in Best Buddies have a scholarship, those that are a good mentor or a role model to their buddy. We have um, the Lisa Ewald Memorial Scholarship, a very generous $3,000 scholarship for a student who has lost a family member due to cancer. We have the Sheldon Itzel Memorial Scholarship for a girl who played in the West Des Moines Girls Softball Association and a $2,000 scholarship for students going into nursing or education that can be renewable for up to four years. We also have lots of undesignated scholarships this year that are not attached to criteria, and that's funded by the money we raise. Our scholarships are awarded on Valley Honors Evening on May 26th. Stay tuned to see if it's gonna be an in-person ceremony or a virtual ceremony this year. But please don't let our students leave money on the table. Have them apply. I uh, can be reached if you have any questions. I'm glad to work with um, families and the students. I can be reached at my email, which is mama todd, M A M A T O D D W D M, at gmail.com. Or you can call me at 515 229. 6800. Thanks. Thanks for um, supporting our program. Thank you so much, Cindy. That's exciting to hear all of those uh, scholarship opportunities, and we look forward to the event in May. Uh, next, we have Eric Trainer. Eric is a Valley High School counselor, and he will be sharing um, information on graduation requir requirements and then also college admission requirements. So I'm going to hand it off to Eric. Thank you. I really appreciate being here today. Uh, first, want to just thank the PTO. Um, you guys have always been so supportive of us in the schools, and there's just so many, so many times, so many activities, so many events, so many different things that you guys have been at, um, and in the background, and always supporting teachers and families. So, really, really appreciate the, the work that you guys do. Um, so, and Cindy, thank you for being here today. It's good to see you. I'm on that uh, scholarship board as well. And the counseling office here at Valley, you know, I think has worked really close with our scholarship board, um, Mackenzie Gersdorf in our office. We have a couple reps in our office. So you definitely reach out to your school counselor. And um, in a second, I'm going to ask the maybe be able to present my screen because I've got a presentation. I'll show you before we before I move on quick, I'll show you the link to uh, that scholarship page. But a little bit, a little bit about the counseling office. There are six guidance counselors at Valley High School 
and there are two guidance counselors at Valley Southwoods. And so we are extremely blessed. The district has put a lot of resources into our, into our guidance program. And you know, feel very fortunate to have that number of counselors able to serve our students. Uh, and so feel very, very lucky. We have um, a full-time secretary here at the Valley Counseling Office. We have a high school registrar, our community services coordinators here in the counseling office. So as your student is kind of planning their path through high school, you are going to you know, always have that luxury of being assigned one counselor for the whole three, four years, that the, one year at Southwoods and then three years at Valley. Um, with that one counselor. So um, it's kind of like we break it up by alphabet and you'll, you'll be with that same person. So every year we do planning with students and we are right in the middle of it for the following academic year. Um, the freshmen, if there are some freshman parents here, they're just starting that process down at Valley Southwoods. And I'll have some information about that. Our 10th through, uh, our 10th and 11th graders started on January 5th, the first day that we got back. So what I'm gonna show you today, they've actually been working on um, for the last couple of weeks here at Valley and are gonna really start ramping it up at Valley Southwoods too. We really, really do our best to try to educate the students, try to teach them how to kind of self-advocate for themselves. You know, as guidance counselors here and teachers, we're always gonna kind of look after them and try to make sure that they're They've got this uh, backup here at the school to kind of help them keep on track, but really, really do our best to try to educate them as well um, so they can advocate for themselves as they're planning, as they're counting their credits, as they're thinking about their post-secondary plans and what that means, and that, that they have a good, a good plan to do that. So um, I'm going to, is it, I would like to present my, I would like to present my screen. Is there, do I, can I do that or? You have Lane, to. can you get that set up for him? I think all participants should be oh, okay. able to do okay. um, um, that, um, but uh, let's see here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a shot here. All right. Let's see if you can share. Yep. Okay, I think it's I think it's up. Does everybody see that? Yes. Okay, good, good. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is this is the scholarship page that Cindy Todd was talking about. So how, how you find this page is you go to schools and you go to Valley High School. And over on this left-hand side, there is the, is the counseling, um, counseling link. And so uh, after this counseling link, you're gonna see lots of cool stuff in here. Um, so some of the information I'm gonna share with you today is on this page. And so if you're ever kind of interested in, in, in you know, discovering a little bit more, always come to this page, uh, but the scholarships and financial link is right there. And so, and this is the link to the Valley scholarship list. And so we do a real good job of trying to keep this updated and all the scholarships that uh, Cindy was talking about for the um, West Des Moines group are in, this, are in this list as well. So definitely keep, keep checking that out. Okay, so here, I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit now though about um, graduation requirements and life after high school. So I wanna plug, if you have time, uh, Mackenzie Gersdorf, myself and Tony Wheeland, we've taught a class through uh, community education called College Planning 1.0 and Paying for College 2.0. So we, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna take a couple of slides from that program and go through them with you guys quick. and. Um, and uh, I'll send this link to uh, the ladies here that have set this up and maybe we can email it out so you can have these links to look at later. But um, if you're interested in a little bit more deeper uh, class, then look for those classes. I believe there's one in January and one in February. And then we do them again in the, in the fall too at the LRC. Um, so one of, the, one of our big jobs is as a guidance counselor is to keep track of a student's graduation progress. And it's kind of a unique time in West Des Moines because I believe it is now this year that we have three active classes, nine through 12, with three different graduation requirements. So the senior class and the junior class are under one graduation requirement. 
Uh, the sophomore class has a different one and the freshman class has a different one. So uh, that can get a little bit confusing. There's not a lot of differences, but this link right here, this takes you to the uh, district webpage that lists out all of these graduation requirements. When we are talking to students about signing up for classes their next year, we walk them through a checklist that we've created for students to really kind of help them visualize where they're at with their planning. And so that we, again, we really trying to teach them to kind of understand that high school now isn't necessarily just about, okay, I gotta do what I gotta do and I'm gonna go on to the next grade, you know, like junior high and elementary, we really want them to understand what it is that they're taking, what the next steps are and what it's gonna mean for their, for their graduation and their, and their life after high school. So just quickly, if you scroll down here, language arts hasn't changed for, for quite a while. This, these requirements have been um, you know, the same for, for as long as I've been here. And I started in 2004. So there are eight total credits required in language arts. So four years of language arts credits. And then we list these, we list these credits out. And then underneath this are kind of the exceptions or the side notes to them. Um, you know, not every student takes language and literature. We have some freshmen that take lit and comp. And so then, of course, there's a little caveat to that. Um, some students don't take speech, they take debate. And some students don't do speech, they do speech composition. So there's always a few different ways to satisfy these requirements. Um, but in the end, regardless of how, what class they're doing, eight total credits is required for graduation. Uh, we do have a fine arts requirement. I've always been glad to see that, that the district really promotes fine arts programs here. We have a really strong fine arts program. The also nice thing is I used to work in a school district that uh, if a student reached a certain level of fine arts credits, that they didn't give them high school credit for it anymore. So a student that was in band and, and, and so forth, at some point they would they would just be in the class for the activity and not the credit. And I'm so glad West Des Moines never done that. Um, a student can take as many fine arts credits as they want and always receive credit for it. But we, we do require at least one before they graduate, art, drama, or music. Our mathematics requirements, this is um, pretty, pretty new, but every class that's graduating um, from Valley High School now, it's been within the last five years, has to complete through Algebra 2. So Algebra, Geometry, and Algebra 2, those courses at some point in high school all have to be completed. So there's that's six credits or three years of math. We have several students who start in eighth grade, um, even as early as seventh grade sometimes taking Algebra and Geometry. Those courses that your junior high students are taking now are for high school credit and will be on their high school transcript. So, um, you know, it's kind of intimidating to think about it, but, you know, a junior high kid is already starting their, their, their high school transcript. So we always want to make sure that those junior high students kind of understand the importance of that. Uh, physical education, uh, again, it's been, you know, required all, you know, all the years I've been here, I think the, the PE department's really strong at Valley. Uh, they do a great job of providing a lot of different physical education opportunities, but in some way, shape or form, a student is required to take physical education every semester that they're a student at Valley. Uh, we have weightlifting, we have a lifeguarding class, uh, we have um, a, a, an IEP support, uh, coach class that we offer. Uh, we have before school programs. And so there's lots of different ways to get your physical education credit. And starting next year, the plan is that we are going to offer PE one semester um, instead of the entire year. So a student would take one credit of PE either first or second semester and do that for the whole every day instead of uh, rotating days for the whole year. Um, so that's going to be something kind of new. Okay, so science is one of those areas that there's, there's some different graduation requirements for, for different classes. So you're going to see two things listed here. So um, the senior class 
and the junior class uh, that are that are that are students right now, they have to either take general science or biology at some point. But then after that, we don't really tell them what it is that they have to take. We have chemistry, we have physics, astronomy, geology. We have all kinds of different options. They just have to do three years of science while they're in high school and complete a total of six. Now, the sophomore class that is here now, beginning with 2023, um, last year's freshman class, they at some point have to take physical science bio and chemistry to align with the new core standards that the state of Iowa has put out. You'll see a little side note under here too that there are eighth graders that are taking advanced physical science. That is also for high school credit and they will and that, and that class will be on their high school transcript as well. Social studies has been has been pretty standard for quite a long time too. Um, at some point they got to do social studies electives. When they're a freshman, they're actually required to take either uh, geography or uh, global uh, understanding, um, or I'm sorry, uh, human geography, AP human geography. So they'll, they'll get that opportunity in ninth grade, but we have lots of different social studies electives that they can take in 10th, 11th, and 12th as well. But at some point, they will also have to finish US history, a year of it, uh, economics, or and so six total credits social studies. All right, the last unique thing that's gonna happen, and uh, this is with the freshman class, 2024. Currently freshmen are taking health, um, and if they don't do it as a freshman, they do have to do that at some point that they're, that they're before they graduate from Valley High School. So that is a new, a new graduation requirement there as well. Okay, so that is all of our graduation requirements. Um, I'm not gonna go through all these links, but again, we'll, we'll share them with you. Um, these course listings, there are links um, to the course catalogs on here. Uh, we have an honors program. We have a scholars of distinction program for students that are in, uh, that would like to challenge themselves for those kind of um, uh, high school diplomas. And so lots of lots of different offerings there. Naviant student is very helpful in helping uh, students kind of figure out maybe what their path is uh, as far as career exploration. And then we'll talk about Naviant student a little bit with the, with the college planning as well too. So those are, those are all the high school requirements. So now I'm gonna shift a little bit over into college admissions requirements. Okay, so what I'm gonna do to, to talk to you about this is we're gonna use our state schools as the example. And then, um, you know, and afterwards, if anybody has more specific questions, we can kind of talk about it. But our state schools, Iowa, Iowa State, and UNI, they're called our region schools. Those region schools' admission policies are very similar to Drake, the Iowa private colleges that are here in the state. And so um, we're going to, we're just going to kind of use them as a guide. Those schools, they use this program, it's called an RAI calculator, a Regents Admissions Index. And what that Regents Admissions Index is, is uh, it's a combination of core classes. So core classes, and I'm gonna click on this link where it says required high school courses. It takes you to this link here uh, on, the, on the website, the Regents website. English language arts, that's a core class math, natural science or science, social studies. And then the other thing that they include is world languages. You, you notice when I was talking about graduation standards, I never mentioned world languages. A foreign language, a world language is not required to get a Valley High School diploma, but for four-year college admission, it is something that they, they do require for admission. So those four areas are the ones that our colleges here in the state are going to look at for admission. I think as we go through this, you're gonna see that our graduation requirements pretty much mirror what the admissions requirements are. It was a push, um, I can't believe how many years it's been at Bad Valley, I, they kind of all get mixed up, but I think it's been about 10 years ago that the state of Iowa um, kind of 
you know, had an emphasis to match uh, high school graduation standards as close as possible for what it would take for post-secondary planning. Um, so you're going to see English language arts are three state schools, Iowa State, Iowa, Northern Iowa. They require four years. So in our system, eight credits, which is required for language arts, is the equivalent of four years. And so um, by just taking the required courses that you would need at Valley High School for graduation, you are going to meet that same admission standards for uh, our state schools. If you scroll down here a little bit, math, three years, algebra, geometry, and advanced algebra. And so that is, that's algebra two. That again, it matches exactly what our graduation requirements are for our students um, from Valley High School. So by just again, taking algebra, geometry, and algebra two, you will have met the minimum uh, admissions requirements for math. Science, three years including two years of biochemistry or physics. Now we don't require physics, physical science is required, but that physical science class does count towards that three years. So um, students that are graduating this year may not have automatically met this requirement or next year, but several have taken this, uh, but are starting with our sophomores, it's gonna be required again that they take those three areas and uh, they will, they will just, again, meet those admissions requirements for, for science. So physical science, bio, chemistry, physics, we offer a lot of AP science courses um, at Valley High School. All of those courses would meet the science requirement. Okay, social studies, uh, again, it's, it, it matches exactly. For social studies college admission, they require three years, uh, US history, and government are usually required in, in those as well. And again, they're required from us. Um, our electives, our, our geography electives, our world civ, our AP world, our AP Euro, AP psychology, all of those social studies courses will go towards those three years for college admission. Okay, so world languages, we do not require world languages, but I would say probably a good 65 to 70% of our students take the world language uh, before they graduate from Valley High School. Um, so it's very, very common. Two years of a single world, world language is required for four-year college admission. So Spanish one and Spanish two, French one, French two. It's gotta be the same foreign language for, a, for two years at a minimum just to meet admission standards. Several of our students go take more foreign language than that, and that is because there's usually requirements at the, at the college level too, as well, for, for foreign language. So those, those are kind of the areas. Now, if I go back to um, this calculator, basically what this calculator is, it takes a student's for college admissions. It's not just taking the courses, of course, it's the grades that you get in those courses that also matter. So um, this calculator um, takes the students' um, information. All of our juniors at Valley will get a free ACT test. Uh, every junior at Valley High School here coming up in March will take the ACT test. And so they will automatically get a score. Um, then the grade point average will also be used in the RAI calculator. So a student's ACT score, a student's grade point average, and then of course the number of completed core courses, those all are figured in to how colleges um, figure out if a student can be admitted or not. So, you know, if, you, if we were just kind of play around with this a little bit and we put in some numbers, I think it's 21's about the Valley average. And if a student had a 3.1 and we're on a four point scale, now the core courses, colleges uh, use those courses in the terms of years, not credits. So, you know, uh, a, a year long course at Valley would get two credits, but for college admission purposes, they would just count that as one year. So by the time a student graduates, usually about, um, that number is about 1856 core classes. And if you hit that calculate button, um, what they, what they, 
what are they're looking for is a score of 245. And so any student that gets a 245 or above will automatically, once when they apply, be admitted to one of our state schools. So like I was saying, it, it, you know, the, uh, there's kids, that, a lot of kids that go to state schools here, but this is a really good tool because the, the admission standards, as far as required courses that you have to take, are, are, are very, are, are pretty similar from college to college. Um, now, of course, uh, the ACT score and the GPA kind of vary a little bit, but this, just for planning purposes, I, I really like, I really like to use this. So now what they're doing in school, um, as we speak even right now, I think they're doing it right now during flex time, they have been working on uh, registering for next school year. So in this presentation, I put a couple of links and again, I'll try to get this sent out to you guys. And this is the uh, information that I think would be really helpful for parents to have as they're going through with their students. And this is, this is the 10th and 11th grade registration checklist. And it's kind of got the step-by-step -step process. We got videos, we got graduation checklists on here. Um, we got how to put these courses in. Um, so lots, lots of really good information here. Every student has this and it's on their Canvas page by their counselor. So if I was their counselor, it would say trainer registration 21-22. Um, again, like I said, they're starting in the ninth grade. Um, I put some important dates um, in on this, uh, this sheet that this is they're working on in the, in the ninth grade building right now. Um, some important dates that, are, that have happened and are coming up. And this is the registration sheet that they'll be using in the ninth grade as well. So um, I guess, you know, I would just like to say that we in high school, never try to, we try to do our best to not um, track students into a certain track. We encourage kids to challenge themselves, to keep an open mind. Not every student that we realize is gonna go to a four-year college after they graduate. So um, we work very closely with DMAC and the community colleges in the area uh, to, to, to really do our best to match kids with programs that they have. Um, and then also trades and apprenticeships have really grown. Uh, I was just working with a student the other day that's uh, gonna be doing a, a welding apprenticeship. And so uh, we work closely with military. And so definitely want uh, students to know that we're, you know, support our students that wanna go to a four-year college. I think the latest numbers were 56 to 57% of our students are four-year college bound. About another 25% will start at a two-year college and, and then military and work after that. So um, I, th I feel very lucky and, and I think we, we've done a good job of building a lot of partnerships to, to help students kind of plan whatever they're, whatever they're looking for after high school. So, all right, that was a lot and I probably went over 10 minutes, so I'm really sorry, but uh, Larry Mannernox here from the counseling office too. And I'll stick around if, if anybody's got any questions afterwards. There are a couple questions. Thank you so much, Eric. Yeah. There's a couple questions if you wanna just ta tag oh, sure. them real quick. Uh, sure. When is the 11th and 12th grade registration due? Well, the, actually the portal has opened today. They've been working on this for the past two weeks. I think we'd like to try then to have it all in by next Friday. And okay. maybe Larry can verify that and David, but I'm, I believe it's, ne you know, we'd like them to, <laughs> you know, but now here's the thing, uh, we will be doing individual meetings with students. So if you see a due date where we want them to have that information into the portal, um, you know, that's, that's just to, to make sure that they're getting it in there, but that's by no means uh, their final time to talk with a counselor. Um, in January and February, they'll have an individual meeting with their counselor. We're going to go down to Valley Southwoods and have individual meetings with students. So if something happens after the due date where a student needs to make a change or has got a question, um, their Valley Southwoods counselor or their Valley High School counselor can work with families on that. So hope that helps. <laughs> Great. Um, and we will definitely, if you send us a link to anything, okay. we can definitely put that on our Valley, Valley Southwoods uh, Facebook page. Oh, perfect. Um, that'll okay. be really easy way to get that out to all the families. Okay. Um, sounds good. 
I, there are quite a few questions and hopefully you can see some of those um, in the <laughs> Let me, let me see, to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to pull up the Q&A. Yeah, if you go to yeah, Q&A. Yeah, there it is, okay, yep, I, there it is. And yep, I think you can maybe type answers to some specific I can just ones. do that, yeah, I can do um, that we'll, while, we're, while we're talking. Yeah, we'll hand it over to Mr. Modernock um, as he talks okay. about standardized testing. Um, and then if we need to come back, if things, if you think it will appeal to the whole group, we will definitely do that. But also people can see the answers in that Q&A session as well. So um, is Mr. Modernock on? Right here. All right, thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me today. I do appreciate the opportunity to visit with you. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about standardized testing and I'm gonna be more specific to the college entrance all sorts of tests, such as the ACT and the SAT. So um, I'm gonna kind of preface this with old thinking and new thinking. Um, prior to the pandemic, uh, we all know when you head to the universities, you've got to have an SAT or you got to have an ACT. And uh, we kind of all probably went through that. We know what it means. We signed up for it. We studied. We, we did what we need to do. Um, just through I would say even maybe the last two years, there were a sprinkling of schools that were starting to toy with the notion of test optional, which means they did not, oh, sorry, my daughter's ringing, <laughs> um, which means you didn't have to submit a test score for admission, rather they would ask for things like writing samples and portfolio kind of things as they would make admission determinations. Um, one of the things Valley had put together for the last two years had been the notion of testing all of our juniors uh, on the ACT, giving them a free option to take it. And you know, right away the first year, I, I think of the students who would not have taken it had we not given it to them for free. And the, the few of them that stood at my door with a score in their hand said, I've got this, now what? And I would say, well, do you want Iowa State? Do you want, what, what are you thinking? You, you have choices here. And they would light up with the notion that um, they now had choice where college maybe wasn't on the radar. And, and that's, that was kind of fun. And certainly that was part of why we brought in the ACT to everybody. So um, last year before the pandemic, um, you know, we, we went to spring break and we never came back. And that was ironically, I mailed everything the day of spring break. <laughs> so we just barely got that in under the wire. And a lot of the area schools did not. So um, when the pandemic started going, we weren't really sure when we would be able to offer anything. We weren't sure about the class of 2020 having all the right scores. Certainly the class of 2021 was seriously nervous. Um, about getting ACT or SAT scores when everything completely shut down. Um, many of the universities then went to, we're not gonna require it. So class of 2020 got an exception in that. Class of 2021 is also sitting in an exception that they are not required to submit a test score to nearly all of the universities. However, that is admission purpose only. And I wanna make sure that that would be understood for scholarship purposes and things like that, they still have to submit a test score. Valley kids are good because we got it in under the break, right? <laughs> so, um, but the, the neighborhood schools here around us, uh, they didn't all get it in. So they're, they're pushing to find an, an ACT spot or an SAT spot. So how did it change? Um, you know, before, at Valley High School, when I would run the ACTs on Saturday, I would have multiple rooms. There would be 25 kids in a room. I would have usually around 350 to 400 kids here on a Saturday taking an ACT. When COVID came, that altered all of that. So we were shut down in April and I was shut down in June. But come July, ACT reached out and asked, would we offer an extra date in July? And you know, with the district's administration, we said, let's do it. One of the things that came into place was spacing. So normally the rules were three feet shoulder to shoulder, three feet head to head was the spacing I had to guarantee in a room that doubled now during COVID. So I have to be a minimum of six feet shoulder to shoulder, minimum of six feet head to head. 
preferred eight to 10. So that makes putting 300 kids in a test center seriously difficult. So as a result, I have cut my test center in half. Um, in, I'm bringing in about 150 to 160 every time that we offer it. That becomes tricky in locating a site. So early registration is important. Not sure what will happen once we're all vaccinated and we're back to normal. Um, hopefully we'll get back to that three foot to three foot. And it'll be okay. But in the interim, if you've got a student in nine, 10 and 11 right now, you've got to be kind of wondering, what do I do? How do I handle this? So I would suggest if you're going to do it multiple times, which you know, nearly all of our students do, uh, take it two to three times is pretty normal in our building. Um, I, I would sign up early. Um, in the past uh, fall, we did it twice in September. We did it twice in October, and that is abnormal. Normally, it is only once a month. Uh, we asked, we were asked to do it um, twice in December. I had signed up for one, but when our building closed, we don't offer the ACT in a building where the building is not attending because of COVID. So we ended up canceling that, but area, a couple area schools did. I think Johnston was the only one around uh, that went ahead and, and uh, did a December test, um, but they were also small in numbers and getting a seat there was pretty difficult. So, uh, but hopefully once all this is done, that will change. Uh, SAT is in similar situation where the COVID spacings, COVID rules ha have come into play. Valley does not host an SAT. Uh, for some reason, the college board thinks we don't need one. So when we put our application in, we were denied a site to the SAT. So uh, for SATs, uh, Johnston has a site and Urbandale has a site. So between those two, there's enough to accommodate the Valley kids. So for Standardized testing, as you consider, you know, the younger children coming forward, what is our advice? I still think you follow the plan as we parents know. You get a score so that we have things ready should there become a scholarship need for it, right? Once it all changes, I'm not really sure, as with anything, COVID changed, what's going to be the new normal when this all ends? You know, we'll will we still be doing this meeting via Zoom in three years? Maybe, right? Um, so uh, and with uh, ACT, there is also a move to move that to completely online. Uh, and if we're not aware, inside the United States is the only place a paper pencil ACT can be done in the world. So the rest of the world has already eliminated paper pencil ACT. So um, maybe that will come out of this in the next year or two that we're into that position. But that uh, standardized testing, it's still there. We recommend it certainly in grade 11. I would advise that it gets done a couple of times. Occasionally, I do have some accelerated sophomores that I would advise that they would get into an ACT. And for those, it's particularly those in C-level math because ACT gets through the Algebra two and Trig and our C-level kids are there right by the end of grade 10, they're ready to go with that, that math component. And you know, one of the comments, one of my honors diploma kids gave me a couple of years ago was, you know, I've forgotten so much math on the ACT because that was like three or four years ago when I was instructed on it. <laughs> so uh, it's best to get that ACT right close to the instruction if we can, so. Thank you, Mr. Matternack. And that's a great presentation on the standardized testing in COVID. Um, we do have at least one question I see in the comments. Um, I believe it's for the ACT, SAT. When will we find out when they can register and how are we notified of the testing dates? I'm assuming that may be um, not the juniors that are automatically taking it at Valley, maybe people outside of that. People outside of Valley, usually about a month out, I'll put something in the announcements that we're approaching a deadline. A lot of times I will have things sitting in the junior classroom. Uh, we run some things through advisory. Well, we were running things through advisory. I need to use the word flex right now, um, where we're, we're gonna talk about that prep stuff, so. Okay, but they do just go out to the website of- Yes, the those are done through the companies directly. Uh, and there's, I have no control over who walks into my door 
we are a national site, so anybody in the country can sign up. And yes, I do have kids from California and Ohio and Pennsylvania on my roster, and by golly, they show up. So, you know, they're maybe in town for a wedding or something for the weekend and get an ACT in. So, um, yeah, it, it is first come, first serve to the chairs. I, I don't control who they are. Okay. Great. Um, and if you want to take a look at look at the questions, and uh, Mr. Trainer has been um, valiantly answering as many as he can um, okay. as well. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Mr. Cooner and um, Mr. Maxwell, um, as we only have a little bit of time remaining. Um, keep qu putting questions in that Q and A box, and our counselors are. Um, fastidiously typing away and answering. Um, and please jump in, Mr. Trainer or Mr. Matternack, if you think there are some that will appeal to the broad group. Um, but everybody can see the answers if they go on the answer tab in that Q&A box as well. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Kuhnert. <laughs> All right, thanks, Alicia. Um, just for me, uh, just an uh, update for our freshman parents that we, as as, as the, both counselors talked about, we're in the middle of the registration process right now. And so we've outlined, there's information on the Southwoods homepage videos that kind of outline the whole process that parents can then walk side by side with their student. Um, I think it's critical. I, I know nobody's, nobody's going to feel like an expert when they go through this, but I've tasked my teachers for the end of this week and the, all of next week to continue to, at some point, talk to students like my language arts teachers will talk about what classes to take for language arts as a sophomore. Um, math teachers will talk about what the next class is for math. Um, we'll work really diligently for those that have um, special needs, 504, IEPs. Um, we'll have roster teachers that will take a peek at those uh, schedules to make sure that the students are, are registering for the appropriate classes. But uh, again, in this time period, um, we would ask that when questions do come up that you are reaching out to your guidance counselors, either Tess Granjanet, who is A through K, or um, TJ Cox, who's L through Z at Valley Southwoods, as we are finishing up our registration process for um, 10th grade. That will run, uh, it seems weird, I know our semester ends tomorrow, Friday, and we're starting, we have a work day on the 18th, and then kids will be back to second semester, hopefully uh, on Tuesday the 19th. Uh, but we still have that week that we are finalizing and getting those requests into infant campus. So but I'll, we've basically taken the whole month. I saw there was a question like, why do you do that during finals? Uh, it is a, that's a great question. And, and normally it's a little bit more streamlined this and not quite as impactful across the full month. But um, COVID has kind of changed the process and having to be able to meet the needs of both online students and in-person students, we just had to try to accommodate the best we can. So certainly we know that this could be a struggle or parents might not feel totally equipped to help. Um, and that's why we've put as many videos as possibly can to help support you in that process, but certainly always call our counselors if anything else comes up. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Maxwell, and then feel free to ask any questions too in the Q&A, and I'll also Thanks, Mr. Cooner. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. David Maxwell, the principal at Valley High School. Um, well, I want to just extend an invitation for all the ninth grade parents who might be there tonight, actually. Um, we have a virtual ninth grade meeting um, that will show a lot of what happens at Valley High School. Some of you are probably some veteran parents who have been through Valley or have had their students come through Valley High School. Uh, but if this is your first opportunity, uh, this is your oldest child, your first one to come through Valley, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to get some awesome information uh, on what Valley has to offer. Uh, you'll see some different videos uh, by myself, Dr. Jeff Grassmeyer, um, as well as our counseling staff, uh, who will, again, present a lot of good information. Um, you know, yesterday I sent an email to talking about the 2122 course registration process. And if you do want to be a part of your, your child's uh, course choices for next year, you want to see what, they're, what they have. And if your children are anything like my children, um, they don't share a lot of information with you about school. And sometimes you have to you know, say, so what are you going to be taking next year? I don't know. Well, if you want to know what they're signing up for, you can get on Infinite Campus through the parent portal. Uh, if you go to the left-hand side uh, in that black field and go to more, 
click more and then uh, course registration comes up. Hit, uh, hit the course registration link and then it will say 2122 VA. And then you'll see all the courses that your child is signing up to, uh, for next year. Um, one of the reasons that we do try to schedule right now, it's, it's, it's a sweet spot in the calendar. And I know the finals um, kind of throws a little bit of a wrinkle into that, but at the same time, we wanna make sure that, that we give kids enough time to um, make changes if they want to, as well as it takes a kids considerable amount of time for us to see how many course requests there are for a certain course, then at Valley, what we do is we share that information with our department chairs. Um, we have 14 department chairs and each one of them has the course requests for their own department. And then what they do is they look to see how many certain sections they'll need to offer. Then they'll build that calendar and then we will load that calendar in April and May. So it's a, like I said, it's a process and we wanna make sure that we're working with accurate numbers. So that's why we, we try to put a little bit on the front end so that as we get closer to summer and we are building that schedule for next year, um, that again, we're working with accurate numbers. Um, I'm going to be sending an email today if for some reason we do have inclement weather and we're not able to have access to the building tomorrow, um, the schedule, I'm gonna send a schedule and what that looks like for families. We will still continue with finals. Tomorrow will be the last day of the semester. And then Tuesday the 19th will be the first day of the semester. And as Mr. Cooner said, um, we will have, um, uh, Monday is a work day for staff. So just a little bit of information going on for the immediacy of the moment at Valley High School. Um, it's great to be back in school. It's great to see kids back in the hallway. Uh, teachers, you can just see there's a little bit more pep in their step. Uh, just having, again, kids back in the hall. It's, it's really lonely up here during a school closure when there's uh, empty hallways and just administrators walking around. So uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot them into the, the Q&A and be more than happy to answer them. David, could I ask a quick question that I've been asked by, by some of the teachers, and we are a parent teacher organization. Um, is there going to be block scheduling next year? And what's the plan? Are you just taking surveys of that or? Great question, Andy. So at this point, there has been absolutely no decision made. Um, we are simply in the uh, seeking information, seeking feedback, like you said, uh, giving surveys. Um, I've talked to my principal's advisory council. That's a, a group of students that I meet with once a month and just asking them, you know, how is the schedule working for you? I got some really great feedback back. Got some really great information from the kids. So right now we're just looking, we're trying to talk to our stakeholders um, and trying to get uh, as much information as we can. You know, the most informed decision is the best decision. So at this point, nothing has been decided. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Maxwell. Uh, Mr. Modernock, it sounded like you wanted to answer one of the questions live, maybe about the Alex testing. Well, I, well, I don't know what I'm doing, so <laughs> I, don't, I, I didn't mean to necessarily hit that I needed to answer the Alex question live, but the, the question on Alex was, I think, about what was what is it and when do you do it? And, and the Alex test really is a, a test of math ability and proficiency that has to be taken when DMAT credit is gonna be involved in a course, so whether that's math, meaning pre-calculus or calculus, but there, here comes chemistry, uh, has got some math to it. So obviously AP chemistry, you've gotta to have to have an Alex score, uh, maybe as one of the entrances into DMAX curriculum, certainly a high level ACT score might waive that. So. All right, um, I think the counselors got through all of the questions that were in the box. Um, if you found your question was not answered, I'm sure both of them would be willing to take questions outside of this meeting as well. Um, and I'm gonna give it another minute to see if anybody else has questions, but obviously we want to thank our, all of our presenters, Cindy Todd, uh, Eric Trainer, Larry Modernock, Mitch Kuhner and David Maxwell. Um, thank you so much for being being part of this and, and showing us so much about college planning. Um, and then one last question, what's the exact AC, ACT score for AP Chem? We have one popped up. 
Is it is it 22, Larry, on the math section? Yes, they got to have a math score of 22 on the ACT. Or they got to have an Alex score that hits. Emacs number is 45, but most people have no idea how that's calculated. But there's a number on an Alex score. But 22 on ACT, everybody understands. All right, and go ahead and just answer those questions live as they're coming in if you want, since we do have a few minutes. Uh, one question that's there is about the PSAT. It is full. Is there anyone else, anywhere else to go this spring? Absolutely not. I am the only one in the Metro offering a January 26th date, and I am at capacity with a waiting list. Um, I have filled two churches, the LRC, and we're at capacity. So I wish there were, but I don't know of anyone around that's doing it. There was a question, Mr. Maxwell, about how to sign up for the virtual meeting tonight. Do uh, you want to share a little information? Is it a link that's out there? Yeah. Hey, Lane, um, is it going to be available on the district website, the, the link? I certainly can put that. I haven't been um, intricately working with this particular project, but I believe Aaron was involved. Aaron in Islam, so I will touch base with Aaron and make sure that that is posted. Uh, typically, we post that on the school's Facebook page and uh, also the, the website, but we can, I'll double check and follow up. There should have also been communication out to families with that link. So I'll just circle back around with Aaron and make sure we're good to go. Excellent. Yeah, uh, Dr. Grassmeyer, who has been putting the presentation together, he is actually out today, unfortunately. So um, I in the past, it's always started at 6.30 PM. So um, I would say, let's get on the, Check the district website, check the school site as well, and you'll have uh, what time that starts. We have a couple more questions coming in regarding PE and the every day for one semester. Uh, Mr. Maxwell, do you want to speak to what the thought process was and then if people have questions about scheduling? Sure. So the PE decision came around. Um, typically, Valley schedule has included a rotating black orange schedule. And we, we realized that when we went to the block for COVID, that, that created some issues for PE as they saw some of their kids maybe twice over two, a two week period amount of time um, because it would rotate black and orange, odd and even. Um, and again, it did not allow teachers the opportunity to see their kids with as much frequency as other classes. So we decided that we would instead of spreading it out over the year, um, and having that, that um, sporadic kind of a schedule. Instead, we wanted to provide some more consistency for those PE teachers that they would be able to see their kids uh, on a regular basis instead of if we had to go, and we're not sure what next year looks like, uh, but to avoid a potential of where we are right now where some of those teachers are only seeing their kids once, once or twice, uh, you know, every week and a half or two weeks. Thank you. In the meantime, I also did pull up the Valley High School Facebook page and it says that the Valley High School ninth grade parent meeting is what I think we're discussing um, is at 7 p.m. tonight as Facebook. And then it says if you can't watch it in real time, a replay will be available on um, the Wed West Wine YouTube page. Thanks, Alicia. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much again to all of our presenters. And uh, I want to Welcome everybody to join us for our next meeting, which will be on Thursday, April 8th. Thanks so much. Have a great day.